Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create high-tech HUD rings very easily in Photoshop. Before we get started on this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. These are HUD rings. They're the kind of rings that you might see in a high-tech heads-up display and we're going to create them in Photoshop. We're going to use the polar coordinates filter to do that and I'm going to show you how you can achieve looks like this. This is a very simple HUD ring and this is actually the exact same starting point reproduced as two separate HUD rings and then placed inside each other. So you can get a more detailed look or a more open look very easily and this is about as much work as this one is because it's just the same starting point rotated twice. So let's get started making HUD rings. To create this sort of HUD ring effect I'm going to start out with a document that's 1000 by 1000 pixels in size. It needs to be square but it doesn't have to be that size. You can choose a size that works for you. I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to start with some shapes that go all the way across this document. I'm just selecting that, Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill the shape with color. I'm going to add some that go only part of the way and just make some interesting boxes. I'm going to, to a certain extent, try and protect this wall here so that I don't have too many things that begin or end on a wall unless they are the same element. So I'm just going to create this one on a new layer because I'm going to move it after I've created it. Now let's just move that up to here. Now this one I'm a little bit interested in here so I'm actually going to come in, I'm going to select part of this shape here. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to reposition it at the other end of this line. So when we create our circular shape these two shapes are going to join up and that's going to help me eliminate any visible border so you can see that they're going to join up but the break is going to be across here. Let's click to select that. I can put all these on the same layer by just clicking the first layer and press Control or Command E to merge these into a single layer. I'm going to start now with some squares. If I make them as sort of tall rectangles, they're going to stretch out a little bit later on so it'll give me an interesting effect. I've created one of them. I'm going to drag this layer onto the new layer icon so I've now got two. I'm going to select the topmost layer and choose Edit Free Transform. I'm going to just set this, it was at 20.5 pixels so I'm going to set it at say 50 pixels and just click the check mark and then I'm going to press Control Alt Shift T that's Command Option Shift T on the Mac to duplicate this shape all the way across and I'm going to press Control or Command E to merge this into the layer below so if I click on this layer this is the shape that I have Alt drag on it to duplicate it and then I can make it much smaller and in this case I'm going to duplicate it yet again. I'm going to move the duplicate out here so that it's just off the edge of this and so it's going to join up later on again trying to avoid a really obvious seam in the middle of my document. If I've got these right I can just Control or Command E to join them back together again. Now I want to add some circles so I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to select the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to drag out a long tall ellipse and fill it, Alt Backspace to fill it. Now I'm going to position this at a known position so I'm going to choose Edit Free Transform and I'm going to move this so it is at 25 pixels in from the edge of this document and just click the check mark. And now I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to choose Edit, Free Transform. And I'm going to move this one in to 50 pixels. Actually that's a little bit too little so let's go to 75. 
and click the check mark. Now if I press Control Alt Shift T, I'm going to duplicate that shape all the way across the document. And these are going to wrap around later on very nicely. So again, I'm going to merge these two layers down so I have a single layer for all of these circular shapes. So let's just see that here. Well, all of these elliptical shapes. Now I'm going to Alt Drag to create a second version of it. I can position it a little bit differently if I want to and I can also make it say flatter circle or I can squash it up. Let's just squash it up and duplicate it. Well, we need to click there. And I'm going to duplicate it so that I can fill it up all the way across the document. Just going to check that that looks all right. Looks relatively evenly spaced, so I'm just going to control or command E to merge these all together. I'm going to merge them back all into a single layer. I'm going to finish off with some really skinny lines, so I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to drag out a very, very skinny line and fill it. And now I'm going to duplicate this, so I'm going to click the Move tool. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag a duplicate out of the way. And this one I'm going to position a little bit differently. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And these are going to wrap around the shape in interesting ways. And if I make sure that one of these actually goes over the edge of the document, but it's perfectly lined up with the original, I want to apply the transformation for now. Let's just zoom in here. I want to make sure that these two pieces are perfectly lined up. Okay, let's just put it there and then I'm going to shift move it out of the way so we know it's lined up perfectly. And they're going to join up later on. Okay, let's get back out. You want to make sure that when you're working with this that you can always see the very edges of the document because if you have too many items that stop just short of the edge you're going to have a very visual breakdown here. You want to try and avoid that if at all possible. So let's just add another filled shape in here. I'm going to select the Move tool and then Alt drag on this to create a second one and again position it so that it's exactly in line with the original. If I hold the shift key as I move it, I can guarantee that it's exactly in line. Now I'm just going to add another one all the way across, but very, very narrow this time. So you can continue to make shapes like this to fill in these areas, and then we'll go ahead and create it as a final shape. I'm going to add a few extra shapes in now. So one of the things I'm going to do is to select over this piece, because I want this piece, and I'm going to copy it with Edit Copy, and then I'm going to press Control or Command V to paste it. I'm going to now zoom in so I can move it. I want to position it so it's in line with this original piece. And then I'm going to Alt, Shift, Drag to make duplicates. And Smart Guides are telling me where everything is spaced out. So let's just zoom back out again. I'm going to add a few more lines in here. I'm going to Alt, Shift, Drag on this, making a duplicate and also ensuring that it is nicely lined up with the previous version. Same thing here. Select the Move tool, Alt, Shift, Drag. I'm going to do this a few times across here. Again, making sure that the spaces are inside the document, not too much along this edge. I'm going to finish with some bigger pieces here. I'm going to select a piece from this. Edit Copy. Edit Paste. Zoom in. Select it with the Move tool, position it, and then just Alt, Shift, Drag to create it across here. I'm actually going to start increasing the spacing here so it's a little bit more visually interesting. I'm 
and zoom back out again. Now that I've created this shape, I'm just going to merge everything by choosing Merge Visible. So I've got a single layer. I'm going to make a duplicate of it so that when I create the polar coordinates filter, I haven't lost the original that I could reuse later on for something else. With this layer selected, I'm going to choose Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates. There are two options with polar coordinates. One of them is rectangular to polar. The other is polar to rectangular. And it's pretty obvious which is the one you want. You want rectangular to polar. So I'm just going to click OK. And let's turn off this layer so we can see what we got. So we have a HUD ring. It's quite small in the middle of the document. Now one of the things you may want to try is to actually invert this shape. So let's go back to this shape. I'm going to make yet another layer of it. This time I'm going to use this one, but I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to choose Edit, Transform, and I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. And I'm just going to move this all down a bit. So I'm going to make sure that everything is towards the bottom of this image and just show you the difference that you're going to get this time when we apply the polar coordinates filter. Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates. I'll choose Rectangular to Polar and click OK. And this time we've got a much larger shape. You can see this is the original. And this is the second one that we created by pulling the data that we had down towards the bottom of the image before applying polar coordinates to it. I've got the top one selected. And you can leave it the way it is. It looks just fine. But you can also resize it. You'll need to hold Shift and Alt so that you're dragging from the center outwards. And you can just resize it until you get something interesting. You can put it all inside, or you could put some of it overlapping. I actually think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to click the check mark for that. I'm just going to zoom in here to see what we got. And this is going to give you some ideas for next time. Sometimes perhaps butting up a series of circular shapes or ovals, butting them up to a line might give you something interesting so that you're actually overlapping shapes as you're creating them. All our shapes were pretty independent of each other. But you'll see that being very careful about what was at the very edge of the document has ensured that we don't have any really visible gaps in this. It's not very easy to ascertain what shapes were at the very edge of the document when we created it using the polar coordinates filter. There's perhaps just a little bit here that you could clean up with the eraser tool or just clone in to fix it. So there's a method for creating these sort of HUD-shaped rings in Photoshop. You're going to do it by creating a square document that has a range of shapes on it. And then you're going to duplicate that just so you have a spare copy. And then use the polar coordinates filter on it to make rings. And exactly how the original data is placed in the square document will affect how your rings look. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.